My son Eric was diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma bone cancer in 2002, just before his 12th birthday. It had metastasized to his bone marrow. He was in treatment for 16 months. He died in February 2004 um, in my bed. I was just sort of stuck in my grief. I didn't know what I was supposed to feel. You know, I felt very isolated. Um, I wasn't getting any better. I was feeling the same as if the death had just happened yesterday. When Stephanie first came to see me, she was not in a good place. She was suffering really from complicated grief, and it was very obvious. Um, she was totally caught up in, in yearning and longing for her son, and in thoughts and memories of him dominated her life to the point where she couldn't she couldn't engage with other people, she couldn't engage with anything that was meaningful for herself. I couldn't envision a life without Eric. So I was, I just thought I was going to be sad for the rest of my life. And that, you know, my uh, family was broken. My daughter didn't have a brother anymore. So it lasted probably about, I would say, four years. Stephanie's situation was very typical of someone who's suffering from complicated grief. And one of the interesting things about this problem is that you can get there from a lot of different situations. People develop complicated grief with very similar symptoms to the ones that Stephanie had when they lose a parent, when they lose a romantic partner, a best friend, a grandparent. It can be really anybody that you're very, very close to in the United States, 60% of 300 million people, or about 180 million people, will have lost someone close. And then if you think that 7% on average of those people have complicated grief, that means there are about 12 million people in the country suffering in this way. Complicated grief treatment is a 16-session manualized treatment that we have tested in formal um, research studies and shown to be efficacious. This treatment has some very, very specific procedures and it's quite structured. So it's different from usual psychotherapy and usual grief counseling. There often people go to counseling once a week and they may connect with the, um, the story and get a lot of support and then they leave and they don't think about it again until the next week. And that's not what we're doing here. We're really keeping the grief and the, and the work that we're doing center stage through the whole week. One of the exercises that you're asked to do is an imaginal revisiting exercise and what you do that day is um, you tell of the time that you learned of the death and you know what happened and where you were um, and it was really the first time that I ever spoke about that. Nobody ever asked me about that. We asked the person to close their eyes and visualize themselves back at the time when they first learned of the death and then to tell the story of what happened from that point forward. Eric was in bed and I was laying down and, and uh, it wasn't my night to sleep in the room, but I just decided I was going to sleep in there anyway, in bed with him. And um, I looked over him, he looked peaceful and really pale, and then he takes this one big breath. out and then he ain't move anymore. I was waiting for him to breathe again. But then it seemed like that breath was um, I can't do this anymore. I'm tired. And um, I didn't touch him. And I went to get my husband in the other room and I said I think Eric died. I remember in the sixth session, which is after I had done the third revisiting exercise, I started to feel better and lighter. That I finally saw that there was a light at the end of the tunnel and that it was becoming easier and easier for me to talk about the death and to really understand that Eric was really no longer with us. Unlike virtually any other grief therapy, this treatment has been studied in a, in a formal research study. We're measuring the symptoms and the functional impairment and seeing 
about 60 to 70 percent of people with complicated grief treatment getting much, much better compared to the group that's getting the treatment for depression where only about 30 percent of them are getting better and that's a huge difference in this kind of work. At this point though there are way too few therapists available to provide this treatment. These tools and these exercises were really helped guide me to where I needed to be to be able to accept the loss and to be able to re-envision a life of joy and satisfaction and most importantly to be able to mother my surviving daughter who Eric loved so much.